seven threes. He was seven of nine beyond the arc, 10 of 15 overall, had 30 points in the game, and really was the only player for the Raptors seemingly that scored in the fourth quarter. He talks after a tough loss in game one. Tim Reynolds with the AP. Kyle, it's obviously it's always frustrating to lose in the playoffs. How much more frustrating is it that this one comes on a night where you guys led for 37 or 38 of the minutes? Uh, pretty frustrating. You know I mean, they, fourth quarter killed us, 32-17. I mean, they, they, they outplayed us in that fourth quarter. They got a little bit more aggressive. They uh, made some big shots, made some big plays. Um, yeah, we, we just it, it sucks when you lose like that. But, you know, we... we we had a chance, and uh, we got to learn from it, make an adjustment. Um, you know, stay even killed, never, you're not too high, not too low. Just look at the film and uh, get better. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Smith, Sportsnet, Kyle. Um, you mentioned the fourth quarter struggles of 3.30. You guys take the lead by two. Down the stretch, you go scoreless. Was it something they were doing? Did it come down to simply just missing shots? Were you still getting opportunities? What did you think? Turnovers, missed shots. Um, you know, we just didn't execute um, as sharply as we could have. Um, you know, I got to go back and watch the film. I think we got a couple good shots and missed some shots, but, um, you yeah. know, we just didn't finish the game well. We, we just didn't play well just to finish the game. Uh, Brandon Hurley, Carroll Times Herald. Kyle, you had a big game tonight. How do you keep that going for next on Friday and come out with a win? Um, just whatever it takes to, to have, win the game. Individual stuff doesn't move, do anything for me. Um, uh, I want to win games. Um, so, you know, maybe, you know, we got to figure out what we could do um, better um, to win games, uh, win a game and close it out and uh, play better. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. Kyle, I mean, uh, how would you compare how the ball moved and the distribution in the first half to the second half? Um, I think we didn't, we weren't, our pace wasn't good enough in the second half. I think that's where we struggled in the second half. Our pace wasn't good enough. Um, I think the pace that we played with in the first half was the pace we need to play with throughout the game. Um, I think that's the, that that will be a, a big thing for us is is pace and dictating the, the pace of, of the game. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, so there's Kyle Lowry who, look, they're not in the spot they were even in at the end of the game without him because – Everybody else seemed to kind of go away. And Siakam and Kawhi specifically, not good in the fourth, which could have something to do with minutes, which we'll get to in a second, because that's a big story going into game two. But I want to go to maybe a turning point of where kind of things seemed over. Buck 15 to go. Here's the sequence where it looked like the door had opened, Zeke. And we were sitting here watching it thinking, okay, this is their chance. Steal the ball from Giannis. First shot, an opportunity from Danny Green, a miss, then this. So, I, I the, you know, the first shot from Danny Green, you, you don't mind. It's in transition, and, and he's known as a three-point shooter. The second, now the basketball gods, they give you, they give you hope, right? So they give you the second rebound. The second rebound that comes out, I thought as a point guard in that position, even though Lowry had been hot and on fire, in that position, you got to make sure that you get a good shot down because it's still going to be a two-possession game. Whether you make a three or whether you make a two, you got to get it somehow. You got to settle it down and get it into Kawhi's hands because you know he's going to get you a better shot or he's going to get to the foul line, which will give you a chance to set your defense. And now you put the pressure back on Milwaukee to make another field goal because then you're only down two. I thought those two threes, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, you know, faulting Lowry. I'm just saying at that particular point in time, after Green missed the shot and the long rebound comes back to you and you're two, three feet behind the three-point line, which you had made those shots all night, with 50 seconds to go, that's probably the time where you say, wait a minute, let's make sure we get a good one. But, you know, you can't complain about it too much because he, 
He played a great game. Old Kyle came back. They needed new Kyle at that point. Old Brooke and new Brooke uh, ended up uh, being just what they needed. And uh, quite an attire there for Mr. Lopez. He and Giannis are here. Came in with the pick and roll, Brooke. Uh, podium games. You feel like this is overdue? Um, you know, I don't want to say that. You know, we just—I think we did a great job of just sticking with what we've been doing. You know, all postseason long, and uh, you know, shots didn't go in early, but uh, you know, we did a great job of grinding it out. We played great defense and, and just stuck with it. You know, and then things started going our way. Eric, man, the athletic Giannis, just you guys hold Kawhi to two fourth quarter points. He takes just five shots. Just what did you think of the job Chris and Malcolm were able to do on him tonight? Amazing job. Um, obviously, uh, is the vocal point of their offense, and I uh, think uh, they did a great job just, you know, sending him left. He's trying to go right and uh, get to a spot and rise up or go all the way. But uh, I think guys like Brooke. Um, Nico or did a great job just being active behind and uh, just showing him body. So, you know, Kawhi is Kawhi. Um, he's going to hit shots. He's going to make tough shots. But at the end of the day, we're trying to make it as tough as we can. And uh, in the fourth quarter, it was tough for him. And um, I think we made him we made him feel us the whole, the whole game. And uh, that's what we're trying to do as a team, you know, trying to make him play one against five. Greg Matzik from WTMJ. Brooke, it felt like you were on the cusp of breaking through and taking the lead multiple times in the second half, finally able to do it in the fourth quarter, and then it, it sort of stayed in your favor. What allowed for that breakthrough? It seemed like every time you had a little run, Toronto was able to answer. Yeah, I mean, we, we just don't quit as a unit. You know, we, we keep pounding, keep pounding, keep pounding and grinding and you know, uh, and then we finally got there, you know, but, but there's no quit in our team. You know, I don't think uh, it's really in our DNA at all. Any of our guys. Hey, Brooks, up hands in with the New York Times. Um, for a lot of your career, uh, taking 11 threes in a game would have been, let's say, unusual or kind of unheard of. And now you're not only expected to take those shots, you're making them. Um, how do you assess how you've kind of get, rebirthed your career? Uh, and also, are you having more fun playing this style than you did in the first half of your career? <laughs> you know, I've always uh, tried to have fun. Uh, you know, when I go out and play basketball, you know, I obviously love playing the game, but. Uh, you know, no question I've been having a great time here. It's just a fun group to be around, a fun coaching staff, you know, uh, you know, fun teammates, great teammates, uh, unselfish, you know, just best guys in the world. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's just embedded in the team. You know, we, we have trust in one another that we can all take and make shots if we're open. And, you know, um, honestly, we're, we're frustrated at each other if we don't chew it when we're open. You know, if we have a good shot, we got to take it. And, you know, a lot in the first half, they just – they weren't going down. You know, it wasn't our best shooting night, but we, when they're there, we still have to take them, and that's how I feel about each one of us when we're shooting the ball. Matt Velasquez, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Giannis, just with, with the way that, that Brooke kind of gave you guys life at multiple times during this game, just what's going through your mind as you see the way that he's he's finishing inside, he's, he's making threes, he's blocking shots, he's doing everything for, for you guys? I know. And, you know, this is the Brooke we all know and we all love. Um, we just want, we want him to be aggressive. Uh, Especially against the series, um, you know, Marc Gasol is trying to be active, he's trying to help a lot, and he's going to be wide open most of the time, and uh, he's going to knock down shots like he did tonight. And uh, especially when he's going, we got to find him even more and more and more. Um, I think he did a great job also, you know, going for the first rebound, giving us uh, extra possession, giving us extra points, and uh, he got to do this this series and. What else he did? He did a lot, man. He blocked shots. He blocked shots, uh, and uh, he definitely set uh, its own defense. Win. Brooke, Tim Reynolds with the AP. When you finally got that first three to go down in the second quarter, the cameras caught you screaming for what seemed like a minute. Finally, <laughs> when, when you finally got that one to go, was that all it took? Was just one to go down for everything, just to feel like it was back in rhythm for you? Yeah, them? yeah. And uh, again, you know, that's what my teammates have been telling me. You know, I, I know George Hill specifically, and then this guy too. Just stick in my mind. Just you know, keep shooting the ball. You just need one to go down. Keep keep letting it fly. And you know, uh, that one felt good. You know, I had a few other ones that felt like they were right there, but uh, you know, our team just you know we just stick with it. You know. Uh, you know, we all struggled a bit shooting the ball, but, you know, I know I did. And, you know, I'm just you know, I'm so thankful to have a group of teammates that support me 100%. You know, regardless if it's going in or out, they just want me to keep going out there and doing my job. 
Andrew Wagner for Forbes Sports. Either of you guys, uh, when you have a week off, you can practice, you can scrimmage, but it's kind of hard to replicate the intensity of a game, and especially a playoff game. Was it a little tough getting right back into the swing of things in the opening couple of minutes there? I got, I got you, honest. I always got you. You know that. Um, you know, I, I think it, it can be. You know, like you said, there's no perfect way to replicate the environment in that situation. And we, we did, we scrimmaged, we, we played against coaches, we had token defense, you know, we went as far to, as creating jerseys, you know, with the Raptors names and numbers on them. So we could have, you know, a little scout team and everything. But but there's nothing quite like being in that environment, you know, and our fans did a great job they brought tonight. They're absolutely supporting us. And, uh, you know, it, it, you know, maybe it took a quarter or two, but I think our mind was in the right place. We were, we were playing with a lot of energy, playing with toughness. Again, shots weren't going down, but, you know, we were in a much better place from the get-go than we were uh, game one against the Celtics. Uh, Steve Ashman, NBA.com. It seemed like, you know, when you're out there in space uh, shooting those shots, uh, the crowd is sort of living and dying with, with each attempt. Um, what What's your emotional level like on a miss and a miss and a miss and then a make. I mean, how, how, how does mm -hmm. it change for you? I mean, I definitely get frustrated uh, with myself. But again, you know, uh, got my teammates support behind me, and that means the world to me. It does everything for me, and, you know, it, it keeps me going and keeps me firing those threes. And here are the fans as well. You know, it, it definitely gives me a lot of support. Um, you know, it's it just, I mean, the fans were great out there tonight. You know, they, they definitely were a, li a lifeline for us, uh, you know, and we, we absolutely rode them as well. Uh, Peter Bukowski, Dime Magazine. Giannis, uh, at one point you guys were shooting 17% from three. The math says you keep shooting, you're probably going to make some of them, but my guess is you're not in the huddle saying the math, the math, the math. So what are you saying to your teammates? What is Coach Bud saying to you guys to get you to just do what you do and let it fly? Um, I think the, in the second quarter or in late in the first quarter, he told us to keep shooting the ball. If we're open, uh, stop hesitating. Uh, I was, I think, uh, in one play, I was open in, uh, in the corner and he shoot the ball, and uh, I think he ended up in Chris taking a tough shot. He wants us to, you know, trust one another, keep moving the ball, and maybe we open to shoot the ball. And uh, that's what we're doing all year. That's what we're going to keep doing. Uh, tonight, we were able to hit 11 threes. Didn't shoot it great, 25%. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, when you, when I'm trying to come downhill, when Bletch is trying to come downhill, we go make the right pass, and we know that our teammates go knock, uh, knock shots down. So we're gonna keep trying to be playing the right way. That's what Coach Bud wants us to do, and uh, eventually, you know, we don't care about the math. Eventually, they're gonna go in, and um, if you keep shooting, that's how you win games. Uh, Michael Lee with the Athletic. Uh, Giannis, um, how good did it feel that you didn't have to have some superhuman MVP type performance, and that when you sat, things didn't go sideways for this group? What does it say about this team? Uh, this is a lot, uh, and uh, definitely feels amazing. Usually, um, when things go well, um, in the past, the uh, the team did do great, but this year is insane. Even though I don't play well, the team is able to respond and uh, to hold their own, and uh, guys are coming off the bench, uh, playing the right way, uh, and being a plus for the team, so it feels good. You know, it feels good not to be able to come every night and uh, try to uh, put my body in the line and keep everything I got for us to win a game. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a great game, but at the end of the day, my team had a great, great games and uh, we were able to uh, get this win. Malika Andrews, ESPN, all the way in the back, guys. Hi. There you are. Uh, I, I'm just wondering, you guys haven't played a whole lot of uh, close late game scenarios out in the playoffs, and what did you learn from this? And then do you think this was needed to win and not a blowout fashion in order to continue to move forward? I got you. I got you. No worries. Take a break. Um, you know, I, I think it just uh, – it's, it was. I think it was definitely needed. You know, uh, it goes to show. You know, we can close games out. Thank you, Jonas. In uh, multiple ways, in different fashions. You know, um, you know, we have a lot of confidence in this group, and all throughout the season and the playoffs, different guys have been stepping up. Uh, different guys have been having big nights, and you know, it, it was definitely good to see us win in a different way tonight. You know, uh, I, I think you know, going forward. Uh,